Audio Jungle. <laughs> Hey guys, uh, Marco here from Aviator Live CS. Welcome back to my channel. Today we will continue reviewing hydraulic system for the Boeing 737 800NG. And this is part two of the hydraulic system review. Now we will talk about the hydraulic system A and B leak. Let's start with system A. If a leak develops in the engine driven pump or its related lines, a standpipe in the reservoir prevents a total system fluid loss. With fluid level at the top of the standpipe, the reservoir quantity displayed indicates approximately 20% full. System A hydraulic pressure is maintained by the electric motor driven pump. Now, if there is a leak in the electric motor driven pump or its related lines or components common to both the engine and electric motor driven pumps, the quantity in the reservoir steadily decreases to zero and all system pressure is lost. Now let's talk about the system B hydraulic leak. If a leak develops in either pump, line or component of system B, the quantity decreases until it indicates approximately zero and system B pressure is lost. The system B reservoir has one standpipe which supplies fluid to both the engine driven pump and the electric motor driven pump. However, with fluid level at the top of the standpipe, fluid remaining in the system B reservoir is sufficient for power transfer unit operation. A leak in system B does not affect the operation of the standby hydraulic system. Now, if we talk about the power transfer unit, the purpose of the PTU is to supply the additional volume of hydraulic fluid needed to operate the outer slats and leading edge flaps and slats at the normal rate when system B engine driven hydraulic pump is inoperative. The PTU uses system A pressure to power a hydraulic motor driven pump which pressurizes system B hydraulic fluid. The PTU operates automatically when all of the following conditions exist. First, system B engine driven pump hydraulic pressure drops below limits, uh, 2350 PSI for more than uh, 0.5 seconds. We are airborne and the flaps are not in the up position. So you need to meet all these three conditions in order for the PTU to operate. Now, if we talk about the landing gear transfer unit, the purpose of the landing gear transfer unit is to supply the volume of hydraulic fluid needed to raise the landing gear at the normal rate when system A, engine driven pump volume is lost. The system B, engine driven pump, supplies the volume of hydraulic fluid needed to operate the landing gear transfer unit when all of the following conditions exist. First one, we are airborne. Second one, number one engine RPM drops below a limit value. Third one, landing gear lever is positioned up. And the last one, either main landing gear is not up and locked. Now let's talk about the standby hydraulic system. If system A and B do not operate, the standby system is available to supply hydraulic pressure to the rotor the leading edge devices, the auto slot system, and the thrust reversers. The standby system can be activated manually or automatically and uses a single electric motor driven pump to power the thrust reversers, rotor, leading edge flaps and slats extend only, and the standby yield damper. So we have manual and automatic operation. Let's talk about manual operation for the standby system. Positioning either flight control switch to standby rotor activates the standby electric motor driven pump, allows the standby system to power the rotor and thrust reversers. Positioning the alternate flaps master switch to arm 
This switch, remember we talked about it, activates the standby electric motor driven pump and closes the trailing edge flap bypass valve. Now, if we talk about the automatic operation, force fight monitor located in rotor PCU detects opposing pressure between hydraulic A and hydraulic B actuators. Automatic operation is initiated when the following conditions exist. Loss of system A or B and flaps extended and airborne or wheel speed greater than 60 knots and fly control switch A or B hydraulic system on. All right, let's talk now about what happens when we have a leak on the standby system. If a leak occurs in the standby system, the standby reservoir quantity decreases to zero. The low quantity light illuminates when the standby reservoir is approximately half empty. We are talking about this light, low quantity. System B continues to operate normally. However, the system B reservoir fluid level indication decreases and stabilizes at approximately 72% full. Now we will talk about hydraulic system normal operations. So what I did here, I took some extracts from uh, FCON Volume 1. Those that refer to a hydraulic system. Okay? So, first we can talk about the preliminary pre-flight procedure. And there we need to verify that the following are sufficient for flight. We need to check oxygen pressure and we need to check hydraulic quantity and engine oil quantity. Remember... We press the system switch on the MFD and we will get the hydraulic quantity and pressure. And now let's talk about the pre-flight procedure. And this one is usually done by the first officer. So flight control panel check. What do we need to check here? Flight control switches, guards closed. Verify that the flight control low pressure lights are illuminated, as you can see here. Flight spoiler switches, guards closed. Yield damper switch on. Verify that the yaw damper light is extinguished. Verify that the standby hydraulic low quantity light is extinguished. Verify that the standby hydraulic low pressure light is extinguished. And verify that the standby rotor on light is extinguished. So you can see them all extinguished here. Alternate flaps, master switch, guard close. Alternate flap position switch, off. Verify that the field differential pressure light is extinguished. Verify that the speed trim fail light is extinguished. Verify that the MAC trim fail light is extinguished. And verify that the auto slab fail light is extinguished. So this is what we want to see. Now, if we continue, when we get to the hydraulic panel, we need to check that the engine hydraulic pump switches are on, on, and on. Verify that the low pressure lights are illuminated. You can see them illuminated. Electric hydraulic pump switches off. That's the position we want to see. Verify that the overheat lights are extinguished. They are extinguished. Verify that the low pressure lights are illuminated. And they are illuminated. So we continue to the before start procedure, hydraulic panel set. Now here it depends how we are going to do the pushback. The FCOM volume one explains it uh, clearly here. If pushback is needed and the nose gear steering lockout pin is not installed, you can see the warning there, do not pressurize hydraulic system A. Unwanted tow bar movement can occur. System A hydraulic pump switches off. Verify that the system A pump low pressure lights are illuminated. System B electric hydraulic pump switch on. In this case, verify that system B electric pump low pressure light is extinguished. We need to verify that the brake pressure is 2000 uh, 800 PSI minimum and verify that the system B pressure is 2800 PSI minimum. If pushback is not needed or if pushback is needed and the nose gear steering lockout pin is installed, electric hydraulic pump switches on, both of them. Verify that the electric pump low pressure lights are extinguished. Again, we verify the brake pressure is 2800 PSI minimum. Verify that the system A and B pressures are 2,800 PSI minimum. Pushback or towing procedure, this engine start procedure may be done during the pushback. When pushback uh, or towing is complete, verify that the tow bar is disconnected. Verify that the nose gear steering lockout pin is removed. 
system A hydraulic pump switch on, verify that system A pump low pressure lights are extinguished. Verify that system pressure is 2800 psi minimum. So this is what we should see after the engines are running. Uh, I put this small note here. Uh, it says uh, push back or tow out is normally accomplished with all hydraulic systems uh, pressurized and the nose wheel steering locked out. Okay, if we talk about the shutdown procedure, uh, if towing is needed, establish communications with ground handling personnel. Warning, if the nose gear steering lockout pin is not installed and hydraulic system A is pressurized, any change to electrical or hydraulic power with the tow bar connected can cause unwanted tow bar movement. So just that, keep that in mind. Uh, verify that the, the verify that the nose gear steering lockout pin is installed, or if the nose gear or steering lockout pin is not used, system A hydraulic pump switches off. Verify that the system A pump low pressure lights are illuminated. So if we continue. For the shutdown uh, hydraulic panel set, engine hydraulic pump switches on, as you can see here, electric hydraulic pump switches off. So that's it for the normal operations for the hydraulic system.